Are you ready? Are you ready to pot it up? Let's go. Let's have fun. Pecast it. This is the Simply Youth Ministry Podcast with Doug Fields. I think it's going to be a four-shoulder touch. <laughs> Matt McGill. Nothing says loving like a muffin. Josh Griffin. The internet is a hotbed of activity. And Jana Sardi. Podcast! The show starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Simply Youth Ministry Podcast. Doug Fields here with Matt McGill and Jana Sardi. And sitting in for Josh Griffin, who is taking the day off the day wall today is the reverend, the doctor, the, the hero, uh, Jim Burns. Jim, welcome to our incredibly professional <laughs> podcast. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I've always wondered what it was like, and it's, it really is professional. I love the toilet paper. Well, I'm really <laughs> and I actually love Matt's here. So you might not be jealous of it, but I'm kind of jealous of it. <laughs> I'm very jealous. I'm very jealous. Yeah, and, and Jim, one of the things, this is episode, we, we sometimes forget to what did you find out, right? What episode is it? This is probably one episode 117, Jim. And, and the people that listen are our team members. We call them our, our team. So they're kind of like this is an extension of a, a staff meeting. And, and most everybody listening knows who you are. You're like the most prolific. Prolific? Pluralistic? Terrific. He has several, <laughs> <none>. several gods. <laughs> uh, terrific person. No, what's the prolific? Prolific. Prolific author ever in youth ministry, written 100 youth right. ministry books. Um, was my youth pastor and when I was a, a teenager. And you were obnoxious. First person I... We can get into that. Uh, <laughs> first person I worked for, my hero, the whole bit. Anyway, Jim and I were meeting today, and when Josh texted and said he wasn't going to be there, I said, Burns, come sit in the podcast. Now, okay. what most of Jim ever give you a hard time when you quit him? <laughs> I never quit Jim. Oh, you didn't? No. You got fired? Oh. No, he left. He left. Oh. He left the church and left me in charge. Oh. <laughs> down to the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a church of, I think, a thousand high school students who went down to four. four. <laughs> yeah. I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Um, but Jim and I were meeting, and what people, you know, t- tell us a little bit about what you do every day on the radio, because you're listened to by a million people. That's why it's so funny, because we're at the lunch, and he's like, don't we need to get back, and don't you need to prep the show? <laughs> And he goes, I don't <laughs> listen to the No, but you, did, like say, a you did say, though, yeah. so, I've listened to it, and it sounds like you guys talk about yeah. stuff ahead of time. Right. And that is the total, the, everybody great. thinks that, and we don't talk about anything. So you're now, I don't even know you spoke to each other. No, yeah. we, I I we love each other deeply, but we don't. Yeah. I'm just on my game. we'll sit down. And somebody will start telling a story. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. 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 <laughs> say, it's like, it's like this. You, you see no prep, right? <laughs> I have seen absolutely no prep. Uh, I think you prepped when you went into the bathroom and you yeah. got this out. Yeah, why don't we have toilet paper? Because I have a cold, man. You're paying attention. Yeah, just, yes, it is. I only pay attention to your content, not the fluff of the okay, band. So, Jim, Jim, tell us what you do on the radio every day. Well, every day I get to interview people. And uh, they're great people with family and marriage. And uh, it's the quite an honor. Yeah. We are uh, around the country these days called Homeward, and uh, our focus is that woman right there. Yeah. Because she's got, I mean, what we want to do is help people who have younger kids, and so we're talking about issues that pretty much relate to this generation. And, yeah. and that's why I can relate so much to youth ministry, because I'm not doing anything different. I'm not be talking to parents, but I'm talking about the same stuff you guys talk about every day. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know Jenna, she's lots of help. Yeah, so that's when good. Homeward, H-O-M-E-W-O-R-D, so people could find out what radio you're on, what station, they can do podcasts, the whole bit. So uh, homeward.com? Yes. Homeward and get parents com. in your youth ministry to to be li- listening. So anyway, thanks for sitting in. Hey, very this, fun. This is a blast. Like I'm excited. We're good. Good. Because you don't have to run the show. That's a big deal for me. <laughs> That's great. Do you think that these shows are better than your shows? <laughs> I think these shows are probably more entertaining. I just hope they have the content. Oh, that wait a minute. Oh. That we have. Now, but just on that half of the table right yeah. over there. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever had anybody across from me with the hairdo that you yeah. have. Yeah. The one kind of possible right? guy who had kind of a buffet thing going, um, but it was all hairspray. I don't think you have any hairspray on that. Not okay. today. No. Okay. Go on. Right. I don't have a hairspray on mine either. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, Matt, last night, he sent an email out yesterday, and he says, boys' night, dinner at Lucille's, and he spells Lucille's some ancient way, <laughs> and he invites, he invites like five guys, and so I'm like, oh, it'll be fun. Guys and I have to go Three guys. Well, you yeah. invited me. Yeah, this too. Greg Vino, 
you invited yeah. oh. uh, I invited Steve three. Bar, yeah. and you said Greg Hamrick is going to be there. So there's five. Right. So right. There's five guys. So I get to the restaurant, see our buddy Greg Hammer and his two children. <laughs> and he his two kids, which I had no idea was happening. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, and I didn't include him on the email because he and I had plans first. And so I go, hey, so what's the deal? We still hang out. He's like, yeah, buy whoever you want. So I was like, okay, I'll email a few dudes, and there so you go. Boys and I out with a teenage girl, <laughs> so and she loved that. Yeah, and a teenage yeah. boy. It was like youth ministry. Exactly. Yeah. And now he works. That was really fun. Man. That's how I kind of feel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a night of a teenage boy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a night of work. It's yeah. 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 work. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it. We we got an email from Mark Krupa, and he is from youth ministry training in the Czech Republic. And he listened to our show. He says, I've listened to all 113 shows and finally have a reason to write. Oh, we told I thought it was 117. Well, he's probably a little behind. Okay. I, <laughs> he's not sure. It takes a while for yeah. you. Yeah. 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 But we told the story a youth worker sent in who heard it from his brother about a guy who was over at, his, at a family's house in the church and going to the bathroom. And he passed out in the bathroom. Ooh. He had to knock the door down. And they found him. He is passed out with his pants around his ankles. Yeah. And so our, our fact checker, Mark Krupa from the Czech Republic, says, um, I'm an American leading youth here in the Czech Republic, and that exact same story gets passed around here. But the person is not a new youth pastor. He's a new young Czech au pair. Yeah. Au pair. It's yeah. a baby yeah. sitter. Oh, okay. In England, who tried to use the sink as a toilet, fell down and passed out with her pants down. I've heard this "quote unquote" absolutely true story at least three times in different parts of the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. So, see, Jim, your your radio show probably has a fact checker. I don't think we've ever talked about somebody fainting <laughs> in the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, actually, Josh McDowell says that somebody he knows actually went to the bathroom in Russia. So it's near Czech Republic. <laughs> went to the bathroom. I'm giving you that. Went to the bathroom in Russia. Said, "Where's the bathroom?" They set into a bathroom because you have a toilet and a bathroom, two separate rooms. And this person looks in, and there was a little washing machine. So they actually went back in the the washing machine. They did not faint. They just did their regular deal. And then they walked out and said, "I don't know how to flush your toilet." They go, "Well, it's over there." And so then they panicked because they realized they had gone to the bathroom. Now that's that. Josh McDowell has never lied in his life. No, sure, no, yes, that can't be a myth. Yes. Um, oh, ooh, clever, right. clever. You're a prolific reader. I'm, just, I'm surprised you actually knew what that was, that that was a book. Uh, it's one of the three books I've read. Yeah. Um, well, we have a similar story. Our friend Lynn, who is in Mexico, asked a, we were doing a Mexico trip. She asked the pastor where the bathroom was, and he pointed, and she went and peed in this bucket. <laughs> it was the shower. <laughs> <laughs> and like 10 feet behind was the outhouse that she never saw. And so you use the word pee, and we can't use the word pee yeah, on what our... What are the words you can't use in your show? There's a lot of them. Are there? And Do you have a list? You've used a few of them already. <laughs> Did you send us that list? Did you have a list? It would be in your head. It's just you. George Carlin's list. No, yes. You know, some of your people aren't going to know who he was, but, you know, he was yes. a comedian that said seven words you can't use on television. We, we can't use those seven words. Right. Yeah. Well, in radio, we can. Yeah. Now, how often do people say you're better than Jim Dobson? Oh, I'm better oh. looking than Jim Dobson all the time, but no one has ever said that. I say it all the time. Yeah, you know that to me several times, but besides that, no one doesn't even say that. Yeah. He's so much better than right. Oh, he is, my gosh. He's all politics and no content. I'm oh, sure he's a great guy. He is a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to take the fifth part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have one person that listens to this podcast. But, yeah. yeah. Probably it's not. We've only yeah, edited yeah. this two times. Really? Can you imagine who said things both times? No. No, Matt? Matt. Really? Yeah. That was my second choice. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. yeah. And both times, I think, could have actually flown. It would have been no fine. Way. Yeah. I don't remember what the second one was. Well, let's move on. Uh, Brian Ferry, he says, uh, call me tree-hugging, beardo hippie, but why not go green with the podcast and what? print the questions? Because I print the questions right. every week, right. and sometimes I lose them, and I have to print them again. Right. And it took me about 100 episodes to even have access to the email to print them. Yeah. And Brian, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start planting trees. Just because of that? Show. Well, you only need to plant one. No, every 200 shows, I'm going to plant a tree. tree. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Somebody write that. But you're going to keep printing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's no way. I, I feel sorry for Brian because it was when he was in eighth grade and his last name was Ferry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway. That would have been tough. That would be tough. Is Ferry one of the words you have to avoid? No, we can say the word Ferry. Okay. Yeah. 
as long as you don't use it with a negative context like you might make it. Right, 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 right. I mean, I wouldn't. But yeah. Are there dirty fairies? I wrote on from Double Island to the Peninsula. That was a dirty fairy. Um, this is from Mike Lewis, who's going to see us at the Central Youth Ministry Conference in February, which you're speaking yes. about. Do you know what you're doing? Marriage stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. That's funny. He said Mike Lewis and then C.S. C.S. Lewis. It's very interesting. The other, the other book you read. The other book I, I just saw. Yeah, I just had to tell He wrote and says, uh, in episode 112, I offended you by saying, Whoa. sad to hear of your resignation from Saddleback. So we, we did a resignation show, right. and we got a bunch of letters about him, and he says, You are offended? Well, I remember I, I remember saying, oh, why is it sad to hear that I resigned? Because it's, it's actually a good thing. And he was kind of apologizing to that. He says, I'm mm. just so used to hearing someone resigning because of bad things. Um, not that I thought you or anyone had done anything bad, so. Yeah. Well, that's just nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and good. typically people do resign out of that way. Well, he's sensitive. He cares. Yeah. He's yeah. sad, and now, right. now he cares about he's what he's doing. Yeah, about what he's a tree for me. <laughs> um, Jason Stephan from Dyer, Indiana, he says, I've been looking at the Simple Youth Ministry Conference in Chicago where you guys sold out. Not yet. No, not yet. We're about halfway full. That's, be that's actually pretty incredible. I know that you're halfway out at this point. Yeah. That's, that's amazing yeah. because I'm speaking a lot of conferences these days. They're actually kind of fading numbers wise. Yeah. 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 No, last year at this point, this far in front of the conference, we were like 10% full. We're yeah. 50% full. That is amazing. Yeah. I think they're probably coming because I'm going to be speaking on marriage. Yeah. Marriage is yeah. 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 something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, let's go to a question on family, Jim. This is from Josh Herndon. And he says, um, 18 months he's been at the church. God has given us much grace. I have a committed and qualified group of adult leaders between 15 and 30 students per week and unwavering church support. I feel very blessed to be where we are now. That is awesome. Now we're having some growing pains in our next step. I'm having a difficult time trying to integrate parents into the church, Hmm. specifically the Sunday service. Sunday attendance is a major for my pastor. And the youth program has not needed as much of a bump in the Sunday morning attendance as one might have wished. What are some strategic things I can do to encourage them that Sunday morning is the next step for spiritual growth for their entire family? That's a great question. By the way, he's got a great church. That sounds neat. Plus, one of the things that you guys probably talked about this, but you know, he, he might think he has a small church, but the average size youth group in America is 12. Yeah. So he, he's got a larger youth group than he thinks. Yeah. You know? Uh, quite possibly. You know, I think, I actually think Sunday morning is a big deal. And the reason I think Sunday morning is a big deal is because it's kind of a discipleship uh, part to it. I understand why people don't come on Sundays. You know, we live pretty near the beach, and yeah. I kind of go walk at the beach, and they're sitting there having coffee and enjoying life and whatnot. But well, it's your pastor's boy. <laughs> no, you used, to, you used to work with our pastor. Oh, he's, he's great. Tim Oh, I thought you were going to Calvary Chapel these days. <laughs> What in the world? <laughs> what is it? Who? So you're out of line. Who gets to say that? Well, I've said it many times. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, and I think it's it's important. You know, more and more, I'm excited about this whole idea of partnering with parents and family-based yeah. youth ministry because right. I, I actually think that parents need to understand that if they are um, leading the way with their kids, that their kids are going to have a much greater chance of staying in the church. Thank yeah. you. You know, Jim and Marge Fields went to the church, and so there was a uh, about an eighty percent greater chance that you would have stayed in the church than where my mom and dad didn't. Yeah. yeah. And so, what parents have to understand is that one of their strongest jobs is to is to raise Christ honoring kids. The way, the way they're going to do that is, frankly, be a part of, be a part of the of a, of a church. Yeah. And that's not easy, but I think you do it one at a time. I think the other right. aspect of it is you know find a, a real strong mom. Um, you guys had that saddleback. Find a real strong mom who can actually kind of help some of the other moms and dads, you know, show up. And it's not just the youth worker thing doing it, but some of those co-leaders and dads. Mm-hmm. When you say do it one at a time, what do you mean by that? Well, I just say a lot of times we get all disappointed if we have, you know, 15, 20 kids and all their parents aren't coming. You know, you, you, you kind of pick them off one at a time. Mm-hmm. And so as a, yeah. you know, one parent's going to come. And, and, you know, the truth is you think about the scripture that says, um, that's talking about the sower and the seeds. Only 25% actually kind of make it. So you're going to have a lot of parents who just aren't going to do it. That's mm-hmm. not the case. That's not their deal. But you, you start bringing them one at a time. And, and as they bring their kids and they get involved in the church, it's going to become one of the most meaningful things in their life. And their kids will then stay in the church. Yeah. And it, it all, not only from youth ministry, but I think it has to be uh, talked a lot about from the pulpit as well. 
Mm. So sometimes a youth worker can influence um, the pulpit. I, one of the other things about youth ministry that amazes me is that if you look just at, like in the 80s, and I realize you were just a mere child in the 80s, and that Jan, of course, wasn't born, and I have no idea what that yeah. was. Um, he just for himself. <laughs> Did he say it's for himself? <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, in the 80s, you know, there wasn't much with short-term mission. In fact, I remember in 1981 giving the first talk at a youth specialties conference on mission, and half the, half the time I had to explain to people what a short-term mission was huh. and why, wow. and, you know, whatever. Well, it actually changed huh. because of youth ministry. So I think a youth worker, like, uh, I remember his last name was Herndon, but I don't remember his first name, Josh. Josh, Josh Herndon. Um, but what I remember about Josh, what, what, I, what I think about him is that he can lead the way to get these parents, you know, seeing how important that is. Because a lot of times, the church uh, worship is the same way in many ways. The church mm -hmm. oftentimes is led by what goes on in youth ministry. Can I answer that? Or would yeah. I just call no, it? No, no, I think that's great. You did a lot of stuff. And when you said you were speaking at YS in 1981, that's the year I graduated high school. I wonder if that's why you missed my high school graduation. Jim, <laughs> he was there for the last 10 minutes. That's what. No, he yeah. wasn't even there for the last 10 minutes. I didn't that would be a typically. You don't care. <laughs> I went to Craig Deans <laughs> with all these other people who were from that youth group and they didn't go to your, your high school. Know, but they, they graduated in 1980. No, that's not true. I went to Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of too busy for you. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You can do it. That's why I didn't. I didn't it's okay. When I was in high school, they liked my friends more than they liked me. Yeah. I always heard a little bit. Did I go to your high school graduation? You were there. I was there. I was there. I wasn't even on the radar. Where, where did you guys go? Greatest school in the universe. Custom. Custom Tiller. Uh huh. The Tiller. What's the deal with the Tiller? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone the other day asked me, what does it mean to have testing pride? I, was, I didn't even know how to answer that. I was, I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, it's like, why do humans like to breathe? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. But Did you say breathe or breed? Both. Uh, uh, I, no, I said breathe, but I meant breathe. Is that subconscious? Okay, sorry, did I practice? No. Great. There's no distraction. Forever. Because we just want to stop you. You know, when we say we don't talk beforehand, right. typically if we say anything beforehand, Jenna, what is it that we say? Doug says, now I really want to get to the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be so, we got a special guest here. I'm trying to be so focused. You're doing very good. I'm really surprised. I told Jim, I told Jim that you might show up a little bit today. I'd like to do a Kathy Gunn. Oh, I don't think that's just true. Said, Matt has kind of a motherly crush on Kathy. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, crush isn't the right word. Like, yeah. do you have a crush on your mom? <laughs> yeah, but Kathy's not your mom. <laughs> yeah, like but I just say motherly. Middle aged person that you've always yeah. liked since you were in high school. That's true for Brazel, and you always try and put that on me, and it doesn't. It's not even close. <laughs> not even close. So you're not saying you're saying Kathy is not cute. No, she, I mean, she's like, you're, it, it's oh. crazy for me. I mean, it's cute, sure, it's her, but I guess. But for me, no, she, it's, it is, I mean, because I grew up without a mom, I don't know if I can do that. So, she is, I mean, she's like my mom, my mom for me. But, yeah, that's tender. That Thank was you. tender. That's tender. If, if we had to go there very much. If we had a music track, I would have to get a button right there. Let's right. try yeah. Jim mentioned my mom and dad, Jim and Mark Fields, and I, I made me think of my dad. Right? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. The last, right before my dad died, oh, no. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim and I are together, and Jim goes, you know, you, you know, I'm in my 40s, and Jim is still a youth worker to me, so he's going, hey, let's go see your dad. So we go to the <laughs> convalescent home my dad's at, and, you know, my dad sees Jim, and he gets all, he gets this big smile, <laughs> and he goes, you're looking a little heavier than you used to be. That's funny. The mm. mistake that I made my wife that she still quotes Jim that yeah. as many times, saying, "You know, yeah. since you're looking a little heavier, I think you are." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your mom also made the thing. My mom's business. looking a little heavier. Not <laughs> your mom. Was like, your mom um, made the little. Uh, what do you call it, Jen? You probably know what it is. It's the, the Christmas tree skirt. Yeah, and it has Jim, Kathy, and Jesus. And we always wanted to fill in our girl's name, but we never got to it because I don't think we know how to do that. But yeah, she could probably do it. I would say that to your mom all the time. I would mind yeah. her every time I see her. Yeah. I was actually supposed to take my mom to the doctor's today, but I thought it was yesterday. And so I, I had to get somebody else to take my mom to the doctor's because I told her I 
And if, I could, if I could drop any name to my mom, it would be okay not to take her to the dog. Mom, I'm meeting with Jim Brown. Oh, tell him I said hi. Yeah. <laughs> my sister called last night. My mom's 119 pounds. And I said, it doesn't matter how thin she gets, her biceps still weigh like 50 pounds. She's got yeah. those mom yeah. jiggly biceps. <laughs> this is from Jason Schmidt. These are the kind of questions we get. Have any of you ever thought about taking the family to a small town and try out a small church and see how it goes? Grew up in Denver and now live in Oakley, Kansas, home of the largest groundhog. What do you think? Is Denver a big city? Oh, man. That's so easy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the only reason I <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt knows very little about current events or geography yeah. or anything. So. Yeah. He's pretty good. I mean, he was smart. No, I'm not. He, he, told, he, he was really praising you today before this. We were out to lunch and he was talking about you. And you had good news to say. That's good. Yeah, so, uh, and I'm not sure if this is a question related to me leaving Saddleback. Would I ever think about going oh. to a small church? Or, Jason, I'm not really sure what you're getting at. And this is when we talk about us not prepping. Yeah, these are the kind of questions that slip in. Yeah, but I'll say I think he's talking about the fact that the majority of churches in America are like his. Yeah, and they're in some place called Oakley, some place we've not been. We've worn yeah. Oakley sunglasses. But yeah, yeah. So that's not what I'm here. But um, you know, the, the average church in America size is a hundred, and they don't have a full-time you know youth worker, and hmm. that is a whole different ballgame. And I think we need to. You know, oftentimes identify with that. A lot of times, you know, you don't find a whole lot of people being the speakers at the Simple Youth Ministry Conference from there. Yeah. And yet, yeah, yeah. They, 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 can't, they can't compare sometimes. Yeah. Well, and I've told my, I believe this with all my heart, the best youth workers, not the ones speaking at right. the conferences. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Those are the ones who are so busy out speaking and writing books right. and doing things. Yeah. Right. The best ones are Jason Schmitz in Oakley, Kansas, who, well, you Jason know. could be so more. No, I think it's great. No, I, okay. I was conceived in Kansas. I was born here in California. So everyone there is great. That's it. <laughs> and it's the home of the largest groundhog. You probably didn't know that. I didn't know that, but I do know. The home of the largest groundhog or that I was conceived in Kansas. Yeah. I got in trouble once for saying that. I was speaking at a big youth event. And I said, we all have something in common. Who, who, how many of you were you know, born here? And I said I was conceived. And this lady got upset. I was speaking on sexual purity. And I was very blunt. And she was upset about the fact that. And you said conceived. I said conceived. You can finish it here on the uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Now it's a sperm cell. So. Actually, just sperm. Mm -hmm. Who's keeping track? Yeah, normally we bet on things like that. But <laughs> we've got <laughs> a lot of questions here. We're all on it. And if you would here. like to send your questions <laughs> to <laughs> SYMPodcast at gmail.com, you can do that if you're still listening to the show. Uh, <laughs> this is from, oh, look at that. Please do not read my name. You can't look at it. I actually have to cross out the person's name, but I didn't cross it out. Yeah. 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 Uh, he says, I have a situation that's created an awkward problem. We just took our students to summer camp, and we ran into a little problem with one of the youth workers. And I first mentioned that this youth worker has been one of our core youth workers for several years and has always been a to-go, go-to person for a variety of things. Can I just pause and look at his body language? He is really, really paying good. attention. Yeah. yeah, look at Janet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm listening. I don't have to hear this, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about this. I know. I have to explain to you all the time. This is a big deal for me. Well, no, I'm Janet. I'm on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> Janet treats the podcast like, like this is purgatory. <laughs> and oh, she God. just goes, okay, Lord, why have I sinned so much that I have to do the podcast? Yeah. And then actually when she opens her mouth, she's wiser than all of us put together. No, yes, he is. No, Over the course of the week, this youth worker made a few major mistakes, like talking to the students in a small group about how she didn't enjoy the camp, didn't want to be there, and how the trip was so unorganized. Later, this youth worker decided to start bad-mouthing my wife to other youth workers, saying that she's done a few things uh, that she actually had. My question is kind of complex. First of all, have you ever gone through this before? It's very simple to me. <laughs> yes, we've all gone through this before. Second, have you ever gone through this and experienced full reconciliation to the end that the youth worker can go on without any tension after being confronted about the issue? I would greatly appreciate your thoughts. I and my wife are both very hurt, not just because it involves us, but because this is very uncharacteristic attitude of this person, and they really hurt the students with their words. Jim, one of the things about the... Um, 
many of the questions that we get over 116 slash 17 episodes yeah. have to do with conflict. Yeah. Right. You know, very rarely are, are we having people write in and say, you know, can you give us two new program ideas? You know, or what's the greatest fundraiser? Um, those happen, but most of them are, are around this. Yeah. What would you say to this person who we will not name his or her name? Me personally, yeah. I, I think that uh, since it's not the norm that this person's like that, I would say uh, sit down and say, heard this, not even sure if it's w true. I wouldn't make a big deal out of it, and I wouldn't confront in a negative way. But I'd say, no, let's talk. You know, we we love you. We yeah. think the world of you. You know, what's up here? And and take it off of the outside and just put it right there and have that conversation. It may not work. Yeah. You know, but the truth is, is I think way too many times in the church. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or whatever, so we don't just simply say, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, yeah. and yeah. really, they are hurt, but don't share their hurt at that beginning. Just simply go, you know, what's going on? You know, talk to us. You yeah, know, yeah. the students were talking, everybody else was kind of talking. You know, gosh, we appreciate you so much. What's up? Yeah, it sounds like the volunteer is hurt. If that's out of their character, yeah, it sounds like the volunteer is hurt, and maybe they yeah. been hurt on accident by the youth ministry or the youth pastor or something. But yeah. to act like that out of character to me is like. What did I do to you that I don't know? You yeah, know? yeah. Because this person's yeah. question is about full reconciliation. Like, right. you know, when I first read it, I thought, boy, they must have really done something yeah. wounding. Yeah. If you're mm -hmm. thinking, can we be reconciled? Yeah. Because well, well, on the surface, it feels like, okay, so she talked out of school, yeah. or he talked out of school. Right. 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 But you know, I think it, it's it, there's hurt somewhere. Because you're exactly right. right. Some kind of hurt's going on. What is it? Yeah. Find out what it is. I think all that's true. The only thing I'd add is where they said, or where he said, my wife and I are hurt. I would stop and think about that a little bit because if this leader has been great for so long and then they have one week where they are a moron, for right. you to be so hurt, now I don't know how hurt you are, that's why I'm saying stop and think about it, but if you're hurt too much, then you've got to do something about that. Sure. That's just ridiculous. Well, but bad mouth in my wife. Yeah, that's a yeah, sensitive yeah. trigger, you know. Everybody gets defensive for their spouse and right. Is that what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> oh gosh. No, that's not true. We have this we have this phrase where we say, if you ever want to feel good about your marriage, hang around this couple and it's not Matt and Misha. They have another couple. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but just by me saying it, you, it's one one you can tell these guys yeah. are fired up. Well, I was afraid. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> I was up to the podcast, and there's always these inside deals. So you, it's good that you explained that. Yeah, well, Matt is the very the inside. He oh. drives me crazy with all those little comments, and yeah. I have to bring our team into it because yeah. our team doesn't, yeah. you know, he's lying with us. Also, all of our team could have invited to guys' night last night because apparently it wasn't just all guys. And they could have brought us. I was kind of hurt. Yeah, I was watching the World Series. Yes, and I, uh, I could have been out there that year. What sport? Hockey. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, this is from Mark McClanton, who is from Linden United Methodist Church in Linden, Texas. Podcast team, Doug. I love it. Matt, not there. You say the shows are better without him. He is there, and you say they are better with him. Great bit. Yeah. Linden was a small <laughs> town. <laughs> Population 2,200. From time to time, I take on the role of acting youth director. The podcast and other resources, the first two years in youth ministry and purpose to be Stop. youth ministry. This is referred to as a resource. Oh, that's sweet. That is sweet. Oh, <laughs> I think they just put it <laughs> yeah, on the podcast together with the yeah, 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 yeah. outstanding books. The first two years. <laughs> that I wrote for you. Yeah. <laughs> they were your scrapbooks. They were the things that didn't make it. Okay. They were the edits from Youth Builder. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count the number of times I've started sentences. My youth pastor friends in California, or my friend Josh Jan or Matt or Doug. When I start to describe our friendship, usually I get looks like, he's as crazy as we thought. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Okay, question. When counseling, That's nice, thanks. when does it become appropriate to inform parents or authorities? Uh, parents, this is perfect. It, it is. is well, you. Well, I think it's a good one. Well, I think it's a good one. Well, this is your first time on the show. You're, so you're, you're surgeon. I want, I want to be friends. Yeah, you can be friends. Mark, Mark, Mark. 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 Mark.
Yeah. 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 Who knows? I made it up. Oh. So now they're probably not. I started going toward his cell phone. It did. Yeah, the 949 phone. <laughs> when, um, when counseling, when does it become appropriate to inform parents or authorities? I know for abuse or suicide to, account, to contact authorities. What if a, taint, a teen shares about drug use or sexual activity or something else? Is there a line when crossed that mm. you tell the parents? Yeah. Uh, legally, the line is if they're doing something that's harmful to their wife, and that would be the suicide yeah. or, you know, sexual abuse, physical mm-hmm. abuse, any of those kinds of things. Or if they're going to abuse somebody else or whatever. Drug and sexual activity, there's kind of a gray line. Some people would say, absolutely. You know, and, and as a dad, I would love for, if that was happening with my girls, I would want somebody to come and talk to me, and at the same time, they're going to lose the trust. But I'd say that you lose the trust with uh, kids. With kids, yeah. yeah. And, you know, if, if you do that one time with one kid, no kids are going to talk to you, you know, if you just, if you go and yeah. kind of, you know, go on later. later. So what I say to kids, and, and still do this, is I'll say, wow, that is so cute. You know, your parents should probably know about this. What if I went with you? Because they kind of do want to yeah, talk to their kids true. about it. I mean, they do want to talk to their parents about it. Yeah. Um, but frankly, for me, if there's yeah. certain things, that, drug, dry, drunk driving and things like that, that's another scary thing. But what I would try to do is get the kids to talk to their parents, and I realize that's a scary, scary thing. Yep. But there is, it is great. Legally, he doesn't have to do that. But the truth is, is that long term it'll be better. But here's the here's the the only thing I would say is so put in some that. Don't go tell the parents without letting that kid know you're going to do it. Because if you do that, you just simply go, you know what? I know you're not going to like this, but I'm going to go talk to your parents, or you are. I'm going to give you three days to talk to your parents or something. They still aren't going to go. Thank you so very much. But at least then everybody knows that you you didn't go around their back. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's say, and this person actually is a pastor. He's a pastor of the church who yeah. takes on the role of the hmm. director. Let's say um, the teen. He says, "What if a teen shares about drugs or sexual activity? Yeah. What if what if you just hear about it? A lot of youth workers will hear about it from you know. So kid, we had high school kids in our house last night. What if some one of those kids said? Hey, Doug, have you heard about another student? Another student. student. Yeah. Well, you do well I think everybody has a different opinion on that. Again, I wouldn't go, definitely go to the parents just on hearsay, but I I might, if I knew that, that kid, I might go to. If I didn't know that kid, I don't know that that's my my right. deal. Yeah. Uh, unless, again, I could blog about, about it. Well, I blog about it. And I, I if it was in Oakley, about it? Oakley Kansas, I could <laughs> But, <laughs> but <laughs> you need that toilet paper? Uh, I'm okay. But you know, I think it's I think it's important that if, if if it's something where a kid is maybe even thinking about suicide, things like that, and you hear it, you know, at that point you're a rescuer. Part of being a youth worker is a rescuer. Go find that kid on campus and say, you don't know me. Gosh, if there's yeah. something, I want you to know that I'll be there for you. Yeah. And sometimes that's and that's hard for some people to do. But you know, we are rescuers. That's you know, we are part of, of trying to rescue this generation. We do that sometimes by not being popular. You know, you want to always be liked as a youth worker, but the truth is, sometimes you have to, you know, go after them. Hmm. Yeah, it's silence. Jim, you want to yeah, talk? You got nothing else to add? Yeah, at first, it's amazing. I've never had this experience in my life. <laughs> I love it. Listen to anybody else. <laughs> How many times in your life have you ever got an email with that title, Amish Paradise? Kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> Diet ice cream. I'm not sure. That's not that. Yeah, kind of that's not that. Yeah, I mean, that was. You no know, Amish listener. <laughs> 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 no, that's a. Um, the guy that does those spoofs. He has a song on there. Oh, Al Al Weird Al Yankovic oh. or whatever. Oh, oh. You know yeah. what? Jim and I only listen to Christian music. Weird Al is not a Christian. Weird Al is now going to ask you a question. I I don't know. Know. No. <laughs> this is from Wesley Miller. He says, I'm sure you think you're safe to pick on the old Amish. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. I live in the heart of the Amish country in Ohio and found your podcast very funny. We're actually helping the young Amish kids in their spiritual journey. Wow. I have watched quite a few of the podcasts and enjoyed your insights and have also attended the youth ministry conference twice in California and once in Cincinnati, 
am looking forward to being in Chicago in 2010, okay. which you're speaking at. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be Cincinnati because I just uh, emailed Bart Campos and I'm coming to Cincinnati, let's get together because he lives there. Yeah. And it's Chicago. Yeah, that's going to be a long name drop. That's going to be a longer drop. <laughs> oh, I know Bart Campos. Oh, oh, Jim Burns knows you. You know what? what Billy Graham you? told me not to drop names. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said George Bush wants to know. Oh, George Bush, who is that? Well, that was the idea. Yeah. I would love to bring you some trail bologna and Swiss cheese to the conference trail in 2010. Bologna? That's gross. Cool. Will all of the podcast members be there so I know how much to bring? Yes, and bring extra <laughs> for Jim Burns, your, your new friend. <laughs> um, I will bring you a great basket filled with Amish goods. I was actually raised as an Amish kid until my parents left the Amish when I was in third grade um, for listening you to an iPod. That? I have been a youth pastor for almost 11 years and was recently added to the full-time staff, praise the Lord. Full-time staff. Oh, That's cool. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As opposed to the staff of praise the Lord. Yeah. Just shooting a dance on Sunday morning. No, praise the Lord. That's TBN. Yeah. South 40. You You probably are on it. I'm on it. April 10th or something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. your new job after Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a show for my book, Fresh Start. Right. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny that they booked it that far in advance because they were kind of chiding me like, are you going to give me an answer for this? And yeah. I said, do I really want to commit to right. be on a television show April 10th or whatever? Yeah. You anyway, to live the next 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. but it's a Thursday, so yeah. I mean, where am I going to be on Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Podcast. Can you this podcast there? Outside. That would be that amazing. Way. Hey, by the way, go into the bathroom if you haven't been there. The bathroom is ornate. It's incredible. Their whole oh, building. The whole is, places. Like, I'm I'm it's on the inside. <laughs> yeah, people are not from Southern California. It's not driven by TBN. Oh, it's amazing. It is the most amazing. Well, especially this time of year, Christmas. Is oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's opulent. Well, yeah. They were in the newspaper this week for having a $28 million jet. Right. Right. How many did yours cost? <laughs> oh, it was this little model thing. I think we got it at a, at a CBS drugstore. So it was yeah. like, uh, <laughs> probably 19 cents. All right, here's what Wesley yeah. says. After all that Amish intro, yeah. which is... I like Amish, Amish by the way. I'm looking forward to You're looking forward to the basket? You're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we in Is it okay? Yeah, he announced it. You don't remember? Oh, that's right. You weren't supposed to. I wasn't? No. <laughs> I thought he was the one who was pregnant. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is so oh, I would he never make jokes about your age. You guys, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I have yeah. never been so quiet before. Really? It's, oh, it's awesome. No, I was once before a couple of times. No, but I was, remember that there was some guy standing in here? And you're like, oh, yeah, go ahead and watch. Yeah, he intimidated you a little bit. Maybe. But being around Jim is like being around Jesus. Yeah. Hey, actually, I like Matt better than I like you. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah, yeah, they they get to know. yeah. yeah. a lot more depth about an iceberg. Yeah. Yeah, a lot more humility. <laughs> 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 he says, what? And you don't know how many people complain, like, when he starts <laughs> laughing. But, you know, people are like, because he talks so quiet. Right. Right. So they turn up the radio, then he does one of those cackles, and yeah. people drive off freeways. Right. And we haven't heard those stories in a while. We yeah, they all die. Under control. <laughs> that's the, the mentally tough of your main. So Wesley says, what is the best way to have youth realize the value they bring to the church? I thought that was a good question. That is a cool question. So what would you say? This is the end of the Amish question. Yeah. yeah. Just for context. Yes. Yeah. Each gets their own butter churn. <laughs> <laughs> that was called Vanda. <laughs> it's Amish. Kind of. Yeah. 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 But he really didn't ask a question about Amish. No, 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 no he didn't. Did. I think we made a comment about the Amish community. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a. We had somebody send in a. a somebody sent in a, a song about intercourse, yeah. Pennsylvania. Right. Right. And oh. uh, we. We've, we've had some Amish bits every once in a while. Yeah. 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 So I think this would be a good question, whether you're Amish or not. How do you bring value? How do you help kids realize they the value they bring to the church? Well, one of your core messages, that you've been saying since I was a freshman, which you probably ripped off from Jim. Yeah, sure, you Youth Builders find Chapter 11. Now. Yeah. But is that you're not the church of tomorrow, you're the church of today. And that was something that was continually, I mean, that was at once a month, you know, yeah. something like that. 
So that, to me, having that be part of one of the core messages that either um, gets stated explicitly in a point where you're really hitting it, or you just touch on it every once in a while. But that's that's a huge that's a huge. Thing. But not only to students, to adults too. I think yeah. that's important yeah. because the adults then get a picture of that too. I think going along with that, when whenever you say that, you also engage them to own a piece of it. So not just get involved and be takers yeah, of it, but to own a piece yeah. of it and contribute yeah. to it. You know. And if kids are involved, they'll stay. You know. Or the, if not, they're not going to feel really a part of the church. Yeah. You know, it's interesting what Jesus said. You're talking about the adults. Because Jesus said, when you welcome a child, you welcome me. Yeah. Not just me, but the one who set me. Pretty high calling for a youth worker to hear that. Pretty high calling for a parent to hear that in many ways. Yeah. Um, and and when kids kind of understand that they are welcomed into the church because we're kind of welcoming them as Jesus, that's yeah. a huge thing. Yeah. Well, our other question that we got earlier from Josh when he said about how do you get parents involved yeah. in the church, you know, one of the things we didn't say is that when you all of a sudden give kids a role within the church, yeah. Yeah. and not just it, the church in general, like, hey, you're a Sunday school worker, but an actual church worship celebration type service, and yeah. kids are involved. Parents, whether they're Christ followers or not, are going to go to watch their kids yeah. involved. Right. Yeah. And, and as you know, a senior pastor to say, you know, we want the teenagers involved more than just, right. you know, youth right. Sunday, which yeah. we yeah. had growing up at right. at, exactly. at OP when Jim was yeah. my youth pastor. One Sunday a year was youth Sunday. And he wore a yeah. clip-on tie. Nice. And then he took the clip-on tie off and kind of put it over the pulpit. He did a good job. But his mom should have been proud of him. I told our pastor, I think he wants your job. I think he was actually a better speaker at 16. Uh, <laughs> and then your <laughs> best pastor <laughs> brought some other. He's dead down. So he's dead down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great communicating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. But, it wasn't that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if the pastor and the church is all of a sudden valuing teenagers yeah. and using them as part of a right. testimony or leading right. music or different things like that, right. yeah, we'll talk about value. That yeah. says from the leadership, right. you're not the ch church of the future, you're the church of yeah. today. And I think it's yeah. another way also to get parents involved because right. parents will go where their kids are, are doing involved. stuff. Well, we used to do, I don't know what we called it, parent preview or something like that, and we'd open up our weekend services to, and invite parents to come in and right. see students leading music or yeah. doing a skit or a drama or something or even giving the message and testimonies, you know, so... We used to invite them in a couple times a year, too. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, again, the average church isn't a saddleback type church as big. And so, actually, it's easier because I think kids should be able to take the offering. They should, yeah. you know, if you're doing some kind of a, uh, a, you know, a video presentation or something with a mic, have a kid sitting back there, too, who's more the, the techie kid who can, who can do that. Yeah. You know, they feel a part of the, of the life of the church. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, here is from Corey Bearden from San Marcos, Texas. I'll be moving to another church in a few weeks. During my time at my current church, I have built a rather large library of simply youth ministry materials. You're welcome, Doug, and Biola University. <laughs> I got that. Actually. That's, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's helping pay my child's tuition, right? Which is actually accurate. Fifty cents at a time. Have you really got what's the lowest royalty check? You know, because people always think you're rolling in dough when you have checks. Actually, it's well. from group. What they did was they <laughs> said, We overpaid you, so they didn't pay me for like a year or so. Yeah, that's funny. And the, But well, one time I spoke and it cost me $35 too because I misunderstood. Yeah. And they said they were going to, I thought they were giving me an honorarium. It was only from here to, to Phoenix, but I paid for it. Then they gave me an honorarium that didn't make it just for the. For my flight, and yeah. so I it cost me thirty five dollars. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Were you worth it? <laughs> Was it worth it? I'm not sure. Actually. Yeah. No. Well, you and Birds, you and I wrote a book that's been yeah. out for many, many years on spiritual gifts. And I love uh, no, no, no. Yes, it is. Congratulations, you did. And and, um, and there have been times because it's been out for twenty years. Yeah. There are times where I get a royalty check. Of course, we split it. Yeah, exactly. I think we split it. He gets eighty, I get twenty. Uh, but I think my royalty check is like for four dollars and thirty cents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I have a book right now with Focus on the Family. I get about ninety-seven cents. So that yeah, that just happens. You know, so Jim Dobson. He's a cheap guy. He's not that good on radio. But you know what? Do you? Oh, right. But you know what's what's fascinating about that? Is that I don't know if this is ever happened to you, but for me, I've walked past a Christian bookstore and seen one of my books, and on the 
Yeah. 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 I just went, oh, that hurts. Yeah. I bought yeah. I bought one at Fuller, Fuller's Bookstore this summer. I walk in to Fuller's yeah. Bookstore, and there's a guy sitting at the table reading Refuel, wow. my my yeah. little red book. And I was like, wow, I am, I am a big shot. Look, <laughs> look at me, you guys. Read me. He's reading this at a seminar. He's reading this at a seminar. And then I go over to the youth ministry shelf, yeah. <laughs> and one of my books was on sale for yeah. whatever, $1.25. Yeah. So I bought it. Did you really? Yep. What'd you do with it? Yeah, why? Because um, it's out of print. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I, lost my yeah, I lost my copy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway, so uh, thank you, Corey, for helping me send my daughter to college. And he says, and I've got a large library of Simply Youth Mission and other ministry related books. Here's a good question What materials do you think are appropriate for me to take to my next church? I know that I should leave some of this stuff for the next guy, but I really don't want to part with it. Hmm. FYI, these resources were purchased with money from our church's youth ministry budget. It's a oh, great that's question. Wow. But, that's a, but that's that's pretty easy. You just, don't you talk to your pastor? You don't you ask your senior pastor on that? Well, you said it was idea. easy. You're not, you're not, well, it seems like it would be very easy because you would just ask your senior pastor or the accountant or whatever they, like how can we answer well, that question? Well, here's the deal. Like when I left Saddleback, I had a budget with, um, I had a book budget, so I was able to Different buy Different than books. the youth ministry budget. It yes. wasn't even part of the youth ministry budget. Right. It was part of my... Being on staff. Being on staff. You I were one it. of the pastors. You so bought I a book with your personal books. account. Actually, I left you all my books. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you packed I have not back. No, I'm waiting for Janet to help. Oh, I'm pregnant. She's traveling. She's traveling. Should have done it back when you're employee. Yeah, should have done it. Yeah. Guys, night out last night. <laughs> All did. those extra kids around. Um, what do you think, Bert? I, I think that if the church bought it, that technically it is the church's. But I would do this. I think Matt, you, you, mm-hmm. you're right. I think you go to the staff. You go to somebody and say, "Look, if these are really important to me, and here's yeah. the ones I'd really like. I'd like to know if I could have that." Um, at the same time, I find that there's certain books that um, you know you've underlined, you've kind of worked all through. Yeah. Can I buy these or whatever? I mean, and again, it's it's a, it's yeah. a technical question, but I, I I hope the church gives them some of that stuff. Yeah, and that yeah. a good thing he could do for the next person who comes along is kind of let that next person know what some of those great resources are that um, that helped him. You know, one of the things that happens in a transition is that a lot of times the new youth pastor has no clue what happened the last four years or whatever, yeah. and so they're doing the same curriculum or whatever. Um, it's really better for them to know what it is. So communicate what it was. That church may have to invest a little bit of money, but that's yeah. not going to be I was thinking the same thing. How yeah. cool if he left it and said, here's why we're doing what we're doing. I read yeah. this book and changed right. my philosophy on this, and this right. is why we're doing what we're doing now. And the guy can take it or leave it, but just to go give you some history on How much why better would it be for Brazel to give the new guy some free stuff? Which probably would be good. Yeah. yeah. Or the old guy. Brazel was here. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, well, the cool thing about it is he's asking the question, because you don't want to have a nice ministry behind there and legacy and all of a sudden you're remembered by the guy who stole the library. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you really go back and look at a youth ministry book again? Yeah. Well, I have. Yeah. It yeah. depends on the book. I mean, you're right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I yeah, name three of his books. Uh, <laughs> uh, Congratulations, you're gifted. <laughs> 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 yeah, not including the two we've already mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you and you know what? I'm going to send you some books. I can't even okay. read these. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I know that you said you'd only read three books, but I'm going to send you some books that you must. And you know what? It's going to be about like marriage stuff. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sending you two marriage books. Just don't yeah. just don't yeah, send them to me. Yeah. I'm actually going to send them to her. Yeah. Bruce just had a brand new book come out, which I think is going to be huge for your couple's book. It is a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the title of it? Closer, closer, drawing couples together. So it's a, it's actually a devotional for for couples to read because most couples, especially those of us in youth ministry, um, you know, we want to disciple everybody else and whatnot, but we we don't have good spiritual intimacy, you know, with our own mm-hmm. marriages. And and for me, uh, I write that book. Kathy and I wrote it together. Actually, it's the first book I've ever written. Kathy, we actually fought during the deal because there was a couple things she didn't like the illustrations I went no these are great you know we're at, there we go trying to get closer mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the um, it was actually a failure because we that was something that we had just struggled with for all of our marriage that we couldn't have the discipline to you know spend more time you know together you know reading scripture or whatever we were more disciplined apart and uh, this has been a really neat thing we're challenging people to spend uh, 
you know, that's 20, 30 minutes a week. Because we were doing it where we would try it every day, and then after four days we'd lose the book, or if something would happen yeah. with the kids, or then or we'd be frustrated at one another, at, at each other for you know parenting thing, and then we didn't want to do it uh, together. And so somebody told us, a wise old mentor of mine said, um, you know, why don't you try it once a week? And it really changed things for us. So yeah. we're kind of laying that on you. You're going to have that book by this week. Thank you. Okay. Here, give me time. It's uh, 52. It's uh, one for uh, just about every week in the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's called Closer by Jim Burns. That's cool. You get it at Homework. Homework. You get it at Amazon. Bookstores, Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Misha and I, it was a couple years ago, we did we were not this but this book club, but we would start our date night out where we'd go to a coffee shop huh. and then read and yeah. have dinner and talk a little bit about it. That's neat. Did that you read good. together? Would you read to her? Did you read separate? Or you Actually, I would hold picture? the book and she would read it and then I would read the book. No, no, we would read separately and then same talk book? about what we read. Um, once we did the same book and then once we did wherever we were reading the scripture. And so she would read one thing and I would read something else and talk about it. It was good though. But it was once a week. That was kind of the rhythm that we got in every day. Has never yeah. been in the rhythm of every day. Yeah. yeah. Although, if you pray together, yeah. yeah. If you pray together every day, Dave Stoop is kind of a mentor to me. You know who Dave is. Yeah. Dave says that there's one. <laughs> why do you, do you have a Dave Stoop story? Or he wasn't obvious or anything. No, we just, I, when you say Dave Stoop, he's this big shot professional counselor. He's right. well yeah. known the whole time. Right. We were playing tennis one time. You and Dave? No, you and me. Yeah. And. I hit I hit a serve with a lot of top spin on it. <laughs> Bounced and hit him in the groin. Who, me or Dave? Me, Dave. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. you were playing tennis with him, not with me. No, you, you and I were playing doubles tennis. against Timmons and Dave oh, Stoop. Okay, you oh, hit man. Dave Stoop in the groin. Is that why you have such a high voice? Still on radio, I used to burn and I used to. <laughs> <laughs> we used to play tennis against these old women on staff, these old guys that were athletes. And Burns and I would just, we would, we would come up like, we'd go, okay, if you hit Timmons, <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> you'd be playing the net. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that was you think it's nicer than that. It, yeah. I, mean, it, I don't remember any of that. I think it was stuff. just Doug. I think it was Doug. Dave Stewart said, what? Sorry. He said, if you might pray together. <laughs> how do you tra- how do you make a transfer from grind to prayer? But if you pray a lot together, of you do. Yeah, <laughs> you do, I know. But if you um if you pray together daily, even for like five minutes, seconds, it there's a one point there's one tenth of one percent chance that you get a divorce. And that's the thing that gets out of Cornell University, not at, even out of a Christian you know, group. Pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because typically divorce is about the same mm-hmm. um, with Christians and, and non Christians. Yeah. But Dave's big thing is, you know, if you pray together, it's a whole different model. Wow. Well, pretty neat. Hmm. He's, he still hasn't forgiven about the right thing, though. Yeah. But that causes him to pray yeah. against divorce. I, I've got a guy that I meet with every week. He's, um, we have a child who's autistic. I just found this out last week. 80, over 80% oh, yeah. Yeah. get divorced if you have an autistic child. Yeah, right. Definitely. They're not praying together every day. No. Well, you know what? That it's a tough deal. My, yeah. you know, my wife, Kathy, you know, went back to work after all these years, and she works with kids with learning disabilities. A lot of them are autistic, and basically, you need major marriage type issues because it's a tough job. It's it's hard raising kids anyway. Yeah. You know, Janet here is going to be on number four. Um, it's just tough. Yeah. But he has five, but he doesn't really help. <laughs> oh. Do <laughs> you know the name of all your kids? Half of them. Five would be two and a half. So, yeah. you know, the first so thing sometimes I forget. Yeah. 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 I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the most fun I've had for a long time. Well, that's true. <laughs> all right, well, let's end with that. Right. <laughs> Anything any else, Shannon, you want to add? No. I'm no. Good. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay. Matt, future of the church? Doing good. All right. Miss Miss Josh, but much better to have you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I miss Josh. Josh, Josh, is Josh. Josh. He's good. Josh is good. I, I hear he's probably a better youth worker than you ever were. Absolutely. 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 So Absolutely. it continues. I hear great things about Josh. Yeah, he's great that he's, he's on this. Yeah. Well, well, thanks, Jim, for joining us. My pleasure. And um, love to see more of you. Hey. Yeah. But you can listen to Jim every day at homeward.com mm-hmm. or channel 97.3. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>